so this is uh, lecture 24 am i right <coughs> so 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 so, so. Okay, so this uh, we've been talking about quite a few things, mostly in connection with the Gallagher A decoder. Okay, decoder for uh, LDPC codes. So we saw quite a few whole bunch of properties. Hopefully, it's all clear to you. The, from the first things is it's an iterative decoder. Okay. In each iteration, there are two steps, right? There is a bit to check step and the check to bit step. Okay, so <coughs> that's all, those are all terminologies that you'll, I mean, things that people use to describe the different steps. I called it step A and step B, but step A is basically the bit to check stage and step B is check to bit stage. Okay, so this is a specific example of what's in general called a message passing decoder. So roughly the way to think about it is you have a graph which represents some constraints right? and you decode by passing messages from between nodes along the edges on that graph. Anytime you do that, it's a message passing uh, decoder. You can imagine for instance the very familiar Viterbi algorithm, one can imagine it's a message passing decoder where you're sending something along the edges and all these things are all possible. Okay? So this is an instance of uh, message passing decoding. It's iterative, okay. And then we saw, uh, then we saw some analysis. The entire analysis was hinged uh, hinged on this recursion, okay. So we were able to do this recursion. Right? We were able to develop this recursion, which is probability of an erroneous message from bit to check at iteration L. Okay, so we were able to write that as a function which was parameterized by the row weight and the column weight and the arguments were the probability of transition P and the same probability in the previous iteration. Okay, so <coughs> a step like this is called density evolution. Okay. So why density? Well, probability density. In this case, it's only probability, right? So there's no real density going on. But <coughs> but when we move to soft decoders, you'll see instead of instead of iterating with probability values, you'll be iterating with PDFs, which are probability densities. So at that point, it will become density evolution. But in general, any procedure like this for analysis is described as density evolution. Okay. So to do all this. To do density evolution properly, we needed few assumptions to hold. One was this all zero code word assumption. Okay, how was this justified? And I didn't really fully justify it. I said because of the symmetry of the channel, something like this has to happen. I didn't run through the entire proof, but the proof essentially it depends on the symmetry of the channel. Okay, so that was one one assumption that was needed. What was the other thing that we needed? The IID assumption, which again comes from the cycle-free neighborhood uh, assumption. Okay, so <coughs> so I'll I'll call it tree-like neighborhood. Okay, so whenever you have a graph which is which has no cycles or closed loops, it's called a tree. Okay, so the tree-like neighborhood assumption. Okay, so you'll see this will also be the same. Okay, so most density evolution that you do will depend on the all zero code word assumption and the tree like neighborhood assumption. Okay, so today very recent work, it's possible also to do to do density evolution for some other scenarios. Okay, so people have done some work on it, but it's way more complicated than what we can do in a class. Okay, so this is this is just uh, this is the standard density evolution out there. The high point of density evolution is the notion of threshold. Okay, so <coughs> threshold in our case was some p star. Okay, below which, if p is less than p star, what happened? P L will tend to 
zero as l tends to infinity. If p is greater than p star, p l would tend to a constant value. Okay, so threshold is almost like one value which determines the performance of your code. Suppose you decide to use a WR, WCWR regular LDPC code on a binary symmetric channel. Okay, how will you decide whether decoding is going to be successful with high probability? Look at the transition probability and compare it with your threshold. If the transition probability is lesser than the threshold, then you are going to succeed with high probability. Otherwise, you are not going to succeed with high probability. One can make that statement more or less, right? I mean, it is not exactly true. We saw it in the plots, but it is okay, more or less true. Okay? So, <clears throat> the, the crucial nature of these two assumptions, well, this assumption will anyway hold. There is no problem with that assumption. But this assumption we saw was not so crucial in practice. Okay, so I showed you plots where I took codes which I know had cycles of length 6, which is quite small and by still ran how many iterations, 10 iterations and you, you could see that, that the behavior was quite close to the threshold, okay, it tracked the threshold. So this assumption, while it is necessary for the technical validity of density evolution, in practice might hold even when the tree-like assumption is violated. Okay? So maybe somebody very smart will come up with a proof for why that is so or maybe some other change will happen in the future. But as long as it does not happen, we can always fall back to the simulation and justify ourselves. Okay? So I just want to illustrate this threshold p star with another plot just to show how to compute this threshold. Hopefully, so length 4 cycles are a problem, they are a bit of a problem. So question was, I said length 6 cycles seem to be okay. What about length 4 cycles? right? So typically you will see length 4 cycles are a bit of a problem. It will be slightly worse and it will also give you some other problems with the BER plot. So, so maybe that is something you have to use when you, if, if you try to extend the proof for density evolution for graph width cycles. Like why, why do length 4 cycles matter, matter more? Okay. All right. So let me see if I can find this picture which shows this density evolution and finding, yeah, I am going to show it here, just give me one minute. Okay, I am not able to see the, okay, maybe I do not have it, okay, so let me just quickly check, I thought I had it. <coughs> Okay, so maybe it's on my uh, thing. I'll show it to you later. So, okay, so so the question was, how do you find p star once again? So it's not, it's not too it's not too difficult. So you basically use this definition itself. Okay, so how do you find p star? What is the property of threshold? P p less than p star implies what? P l tends to zero. Okay, p greater than p star implies p l will tend to will not tend to zero. Okay, so it will tend to some finite value. Okay, you just use this definition. You start with a very low value of zero p. You will see it will tend to zero. Keep on increasing it slightly till you get to a point where it does not tend to zero. The place where the transition occurs is your threshold. Okay, so it's very easy to use this uh, method to do that. Okay, is that fine? Okay, so so the next few things that we are going to do is slowly extend this further. Okay, so the first extension. So another point we observed is, okay, I, I just showed it to you. I, the three comma six regular code, right, half, had a p star of 0 0.04. Okay, so that's uh, that's one thing we saw just in that example. Three comma six regular LDPC code. <laughs> okay, so I'll say a code has threshold, but you should you should realize that really has not much meaning, right? How did we how did we yeah. think of a code? The code itself is basically when I say three six regular, it's actually an ensemble of codes. Okay, so you make a random selection from that ensemble, you will get uh, this the threshold. Okay, so this has threshold 0 0.04. Okay, the rate of this code is what half and capacity is. If you remember 0.11, okay, 
so there is a gap so it's far away from the capacity reason not, not very far but quite far okay maybe we would like to have a code which is <coughs> better than which has a threshold better than 0 0.04 okay so what else can we do if you want to keep rate as half what other regular codes will have rate half for what other WCWR will you have rate half? Yeah, WR is 2 times WC, right? That's the only constraint you need. So if you put 4 here, 4, 8 will also have a rate half. So if you, if you keep doing that, you'll see for 4, 8 regular LDPC codes, the threshold under some decoding will slightly become better, but after that, it will start becoming worse. Okay? So roughly, this is the best you can do with regular codes. Okay, 4, 8 is slightly better in some cases, but in general with regular LDPC codes, this is the best you can do. Okay, so you cannot get any closer. Okay, if you want to do better than that, you have to study some modifications. Okay, so you remember the way I defined LDPC codes was what? Any code with a sparse parity check matrix and then I said, I am going to look at regular codes. Okay, so, so you will have to relax that assumption and look at other other sparse parity check matrices possibly to, to close this difference. Okay, what is your question? <coughs> I'm sorry? Not okay, oh, cap is capacity, I'm sorry. How do you calculate the return the rate of the So I'm saying one minus h of point one one equals half. I have done this calculation before. Okay, I showed you the plot also sometime and you said 0.11 is where it gets to half. <coughs> okay. Alright, so this is the this is the scene with regular codes. So maybe you need maybe you need uh, something else, something else from the ensemble. Okay, but then the definition is still very general, right? Sparse LDPC codes. Maybe there are so many sparse matrices, you need more structure. And there's a very nice way of introducing that structure based on column weights and row weights once again. Okay. So that's one direction in which we'll move. Okay, so the next, uh, so this is uh, things to come. Okay, first one is uh, irregular codes. Okay, what are called irregular codes. Okay, that's the that's one direction. The other direction that we need to move towards is soft decoding. Okay, so this is a this is a very huge and real selling point for LDPC codes and pra practical applications. The fact that you have very efficient soft decoders which are implementable in today's BLSI and uh, DSPs and such, uh, such, such devices. Okay, So that's a major uh, plus point and we'll have to do that but I want to postpone that a little bit or maybe I'll do that first. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm still debating if we should jump into irregular codes because if, the moment you jump into irregular codes, the things become more complicated. You'll have to do a lot of notation and there's lots of things to understand. So at some point we'll have to make a decision. Maybe maybe this class will make a decision and either move towards irregular codes first and then look at soft decoding and then go to soft decoding uh, slowly. I think I think that's the best thing to do. I'll do regular codes first, then describe them a little bit and get you used to the idea, then figure out how to do density evolution for irregular codes and all that and then we'll move to soft decoding. Okay, so let's just complete this picture here with the BSC and then move to soft decoding. That's better. Okay. So both of these are quite important. And uh, we'll we'll begin by looking at irregular codes. So what what am I going to do now? Okay, so I want to generalize that this requirement that every every column should have a constant weight and every row should have a constant weight. Okay, so I'm going to generalize that a little bit, but I know ultimately that the row weights and column weights are going to control the performance of my decoder. Why do I know that? Like assuming Gallagher A decoding. Okay, so I'm going to always assume I'm going to do Gallagher A decoding. Whatever matrix I get, I'll do Gallagher A decoding. Okay. So if you go back and look at Gallagher A decoding very carefully, okay, it depends on the column weight and the row weight and go back and look at the way we analyzed Gallagher A decoding, the density evolution is parameterized by the column weight and row weight. So you know, uh, you know the behavior of Gallagher A decoding is going to be controlled by the column weights and row weights. Okay? So you will see the way you define irregular codes will also be by restricting column weights and row weights. Okay, right now you said all columns should have weight 3, all rows should have weight 6. Okay, and then you got the 3, 6 regular construction. You will now say so many columns should have weight say 2, then so many columns should have weight 3, so many columns should have weight 5. Okay, likewise, you will define some constraints. Same thing you will do for rows 
and then look at all codes which satisfy those constraints those become irregular codes okay so it's a very simple definition okay so that is your extra degree of freedom that you need okay the di di distribution of columns weights of columns and weights of rows okay instead of being one value it's now a selection of values so how do you choose those values okay for that more work is needed okay we'll slowly come to it but we'll now assume begin by assuming that somebody gives me this constraint somebody tells me so many there are so many columns of weights weight 2 so many columns of weight 3 etc and so many rows of weight 6 or 7 or whatever right tells me that and then i'm going to study the set of all ldpc codes which satisfy that constraint okay first i'm going to do that and then we'll see how to come up with those constraints okay so that's that slowly takes us to this notion of irregular ldpc codes okay so <coughs> Okay, so so first thing is notation and specification. Okay, so we always initially when we specify codes we start with block length, and, but for LDPC codes we don't do that, right? We only start start with this column weights and row weights, and then we say we go to a block length large enough where this can be accomplished. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying how many columns have weight, weight two, three, so on. Okay, so for that I'll use this notation L I. Okay, li will be fraction of columns of weight i. Okay, this is what I'm going to say, capital li to be. Okay, so what is i? I I maybe I mean you don't want i to be zero, right? I mean, but typically one can one can start with say i one two three etc. So you'll see later on. Typically, even i equals one will not be allowed. Okay, but one can imagine that is how I, that's how I define my L. Okay, so later on maybe L i equals one is not a bad idea, not a good idea. But right now we'll just allow. We'll just say this is fine. Okay, similarly I'll have R j, which is fraction of rows. Okay, fraction of rows of weight. J. Okay, likewise J goes 1, 2, so on. Okay, so for regular codes, how would I do it? Yeah, so L sub WC will be equal to 1 and all other LIs will be 0. R sub WR will be equal to 1. Okay, and every other R sub J will be 0. That's the regular code. So regular codes are a special case of irregular codes. Okay. So maybe that's a bad definition. Maybe you should say this uh, these are general LDPC codes as opposed to saying irregular. Okay. Regular codes are a subset of this. Okay. So that's the way to think about uh, regularity. Okay. So instead of writing down vectors like this, it's also convenient to 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 collect them together into a polynomial. Okay. So we can do that also if we want. We can say L of x equals summation li x power i okay and r of x equals summation rj x power j okay so it's just a way of thinking about it it's just a vector that's what's most important you can think of it as a polynomial if you want then it becomes a degree distribution polynomial okay so these two are supposed to be distributions with the node perspective okay i'm taking the fraction of bit nodes of weight of degree i okay fraction of check nodes of degree j okay so the numerator the denominator i have total number of columns the denominator i have total number of rows which correspond to node perspective I mean, as we move along we'll also define an edge perspective degree distribution okay it's a little bit more involved but we'll start with this first and then we'll move on to the other thing okay so so the next thing is rate okay so how, how did it work out for the regular case? The regular case, rate became a function of just WR and WC, 1 minus WC by WR. Okay, it became a very simple function. In this case also, you'll see, you can write down the rate as a function of capital LI and capital RJ. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes to try and do that. Let me see. Okay.
what was useful in the previous case something was useful counting the number of ones was useful How many lines? It's three lines. Huh? Okay. So, so people are telling me that the rate, design rate. Okay. Remember, this is only design rate. Why? The actual rate can be can be larger than this, right? Because you can have the number of rows being all your rows being linearly dependent. In which case, the actual rate will be larger than this. But in general, the design rate. Like they've calculated, will work out to divided by summation J R J. Okay, is that fine? Simple enough. Simple enough. Everybody agrees. Okay, good. So and for the regular case, it will become one minus W R by W C by W R also. There's no problem. Okay. So now, now you'll see the rate. Th there's there is some advantage to using some polynomial type notation if, if, if i were to write l of x to be summation l i x power i then r of x to be summation r j x power j okay so you can do some nice uh, right what can you do to simplify this okay you can say this is 1 minus l prime 1 divided by r prime 1 Okay, so it's more uh, succinct. I did L prime. L prime is derivative. Okay, so it's just uh, convenient shorthand to think of it as polynomials. All these expressions become, you don't have to write some fancy sigmas, it's just L prime of 1, R prime of 1. Okay, maybe you think it's not that crucial, but it's there anyway, we can use it. Okay. <coughs> That's the design rate. And the actual rate, as I said, can be larger than this. Okay, so that's the definition. This is clear, right? It's clear. It's okay. People are happy. Okay, so it's good to think of some examples. Always find it difficult to give examples. The first example is the regular examples. I will not talk too much about them. Second example I want to talk about is uh, maybe some very simple irregular uh, example. Okay, suppose I say. I want to fix, I'll say I'll take L1 to be 0, okay, just for fun. I'll take L2 to be 0.5, okay, okay, what else can we do? Sorry? Some other L0.5. Some other L0.5 that you, that you like, okay, which L do we, should we take? 4, okay, everybody agrees, so you want more. 4 is 0.5 is good, okay, let's do 4.25 and then. 8.25 just for fun okay 1248 is that fine can i make l8 as 0 0.3 no oh, why because l8 have to add to 1 okay so those conditions need to be satisfied for instance here i can say l of 1 equals r of 1 equals 1 okay okay now i'm going to say i allow only okay let me say i want to allow two consecutive degrees for r i don't want to allow all kinds of degrees for r okay for from a row weights i don't want to allow all kinds of weights i want to allow only two consecutive weights okay some x no, not x some w r and w r plus 1 okay only those two weights i want to allow i want you to figure out for a rate half code what those two weights will be and what the fraction will be okay i'm going to say rate half okay r sub w equals 
not equal to 0 and then R W plus 1 not equal to 0. All other R J equal to 0. I want you to figure out what W has to be and what the fractions have to be. <coughs> Hopefully it will work out to something decent. I have not tried this before so I am just running it cold on you. We will see. But I know it has to work out just based on this. You don't need any more information. You have to use two different things. You have to use R of 1 equals 1 and then rate equals 1 minus L prime of 1 by R prime of 1. So, you will have two variables, two equations. Right? No? It's not working out. Something is wrong. Oh no, you should get something decent. No, 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 no. It has to work out. Think about it for a while. <coughs> Can you not can you not choose some values? Is it going to work out? R4, L4 and L8. That's sad. You're not getting? Okay, maybe you want to more change something, maybe make L8.5. My L4 0. Play around with it. You should get. I'm surprised that you're not getting. You don't want that to be an integer. Oh, okay. So then just pick something else. Pick. Uh, yeah, something like that. No, L, don't pick L7.5, <laughs> pick L7 to be 0.25, yeah, try something, if you want it to work out. I don't know, there is a contention that maybe you don't want this 8, maybe you want this to be 7, okay, try that, try that with 7 also. That works out with 7? With 7 it works out? Okay. So I am being told if I change this 8 to 7, things will work out. Okay. And you will get W equals 7. And RW is what? Half. And uh, well, let me just say R7. Then R8 is half. Okay. Please check if this works out. <coughs> we have enough people agreeing, we can proceed. Did you get this? You are fine? Okay, so looks like I think for accurate solutions you need some nice things, but typically you can live with 0.5001 as your rate. You don't need 0.5 exactly, right? So can, so, if you allow for such things, you will see for most distributions, you, this will work out, okay. Anyway, so, so, so here is a irregular code. So, let me write it out uh, afterwards. So, so, so now to denote irregular codes, for regular codes, we had WR, WC, comma WR, okay. So, notation for irregular codes basically is LX, RX. LDPC code. So, you see this is another advantage of the polynomial representation, right? So, in our examples, what will be a regular code? For instance, an x power 3, x power 6 LDPC code will be a 
regular 3-6 LDPC code. So when you only have one degree, no point in writing x power 3, you might as well write it as 3 comma 6. But the other example that we saw is what? x, x squared by 2 plus x power 4 by 4 plus x power 7 by 4 and x power 7 by 2 plus x power 8 by 2. Okay, both these codes have rate equals half. <coughs> okay, design rate half. <coughs> okay, so so that's how the examples for irregular codes will come. So suppose I ask you the question: Can you characterize all L of x and R of x for which design rate equals half. What kind of a characterization will that be? What will you get? Yeah, so all you have to do is do a 1 minus, right? So what do you know? Suppose I want to look at, okay, so suppose, suppose I ask a question, all L of x, R of x such that design rate equals half, what is the only thing I care about? Half equals? 1 minus summation i l i summation j r j okay so i'm using capital r for two things hopefully it's not it's clear okay so I'm, I'm, when i say r alone it's rate and if i say r j it is the or r of x it is the degree distribution okay i'm sorry for that just worked out that way so then what do you do all it works out to be is a linear equation right it's a nice linear equation it says sigma i l i minus sigma j 2rj equals 0. Okay, so this is the linear equation you get in i n r j. Nice linear looking equation. Well, it's i times r l i. So maybe it's not <coughs> that good, but it's at least a linear equation. Oh, so now I can do a further step and <coughs> do the same restriction. So it's very typical to restrict like this. It's very, very typical to restrict r w not equal to 0, r w plus 1 not equal to 0 and rj 0 for for all other j. Two should be for li. Huh? Yeah, okay. So, some such thing. Okay. So, other j. So, for j not equal to w, you have, this is a very typical restriction. Okay, so you basically for R you have only one variable R W. What is R W plus one? It's one minus R W. Okay, so you already get that, and then everything else is uh, zero. So you will get only two values for R. Okay, you might ask me why I want to do that, but just it's, it turns out it's good enough. Okay, so we'll see later on. But so it's good to concentrate on those things, and for L, it's typical to restrict the maximum i. So I want to say L i equals zero for i greater than or equal greater than let me say strictly greater than some dl which is my maximum left degree okay so beyond beyond a certain weight i'm going to say li is zero okay it's very typical to restrict your space this way okay and then how many variables do you actually have you have l1 through ldl but there's only dl minus 1 there Okay, because they have to add up to 1. Okay, so dl minus 1 and then w and rw. So you have only so many variables and there is a very nice equation which characterizes <coughs> what those variables have to satisfy. Okay, so that will give you the set of all distributions which have rate half and they satisfy all these requirements. Okay, typically we will restrict ourselves to these codes. Even among this set of all irregular codes, we will restrict ourselves to codes which have these type of distributions. Okay. Well, again, this, this is what is used typically. Okay. So, and it's good enough for our purposes. So, DL will typically be 10 or 20 or not more than that. You don't want too, too large a degree. You'll see large degree means more calculations here, there and all that. So, it's not a very nice thing to have a large degree. Also. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, most of these restrictions are justified by simulation. That's what you're asking. So, 
<coughs> so for instance the code that gets to within 0.0045 db of capacity has dl equals some 8000 or something okay but everything else it satisfies the same uh, same test okay so that's how it works okay so these are the definitions for irregular codes based on node perspective you should get some degree of comfort with these li rj and all that okay i know it's uh, it's not too difficult it's just basic counting and simple arithmetic but it can get a little bit tricky okay so the next thing to worry about is how do you construct okay suppose i give you this ln r and suppose i give you an n n large enough say 1000 okay how do you construct an ldpc code which satisfies all these things can we use gallagher construction is it very easy to use gallagher construction it's not easy right so gallagher construction worked very well just for the regular case so you will have to go back to the socket construction and in the socket construction you will have different sockets for different nodes depending on the fraction that you have okay but the socket construction will always work right do you agree the total number of sockets on the left hand side equals the total number of sockets on the right hand side and do you pick any permutation you will get a valid tanner graph from there you can go to a parity check matrix which satisfies all these constraints okay so the socket construction will work in the general case that's a that's a nice advantage to have okay so that's about construction i i don't want to say more about construction we'll just stop there but uh, but it's possible to do a construction okay the next thing i want to talk about is the same thing from an edge perspective okay so it's possible also to define these uh, these fractions from an edge perspective so okay this capital l and r are nice but it turns out for for density evolution you will need this edge perspective things okay these are much simpler density evolution is nice and nice to describe if you have edge perspective degree distributions okay so what is li and R, rj li is the fraction of nodes which have degree i <coughs> so likewise i am going to define row i to be fraction of edges connected to degree i bit nodes okay so if i have to calculate this fraction what will come in the numerator denominator okay let's start with the denominator this <laughs> total number of edges okay in the numerator you will have number of edges that are coming from degree i bit nodes or number of ones that are coming from weight i columns okay denominator you have total number of ones in the parity check matrix the numerator you have number of ones in the in uh, degree i or weight i columns okay what's the connection between row i and li do you have a connection between row i and li okay well it's not not quite straight forward one needs to do some work for it but let's just let's just start with this now okay that's row i for you okay so this is defined for i equals 1 2 so on similarly okay well i'm sorry this is not row this is usually denoted lambda okay i'm sorry for this okay this is lambda then there is row j which is fraction of edges connected to <coughs> degree j check nodes okay if you want to calculate this from the matrix in the denominator you'll have again the total number of ones in the numerator you'll have what number of ones in degree j rows okay or weight j rows okay <coughs> there's a very simple connection between row i and li and row j and rj okay so how do you calculate that suppose i have to calculate row i what should i do for 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 starters i might want to think of block length as n okay how will i compute lambda i yes. what does it mean to have degree i bit node okay degree of a bit node is the number of edges that are connected to it okay when i say degree i bit node all the bit nodes which have degree i all the columns which have weight i weight of a column is equal to degree of a node okay i think i made i must have made that remark sometime did i do that maybe i made it in passing people didn't register okay so in the tanner graph the columns correspond to the bit nodes rows correspond to the check nodes number of ones each one corresponds to an edge 
Okay, so if you look at a weight i column, that bit node would have degree i, it would have i edges connected to it. And if you look at a weight j row, that corresponding check node will have j edges connected to it. Okay, so all these correspondences should be clear. Okay, so how will you compute lambda i given given for an L of x comma R of x <coughs> LDPC code? How will you compute lambda i? Li into i divided by summation i li okay do you agree okay so just multiply by n to see what happens okay what is li times n total number of bit nodes of weight i do you agree li is the fraction of bit nodes of weight i so li times n will be the total number of bit nodes of weight i multiply that by i to get the total number of ones from weight i columns now why am I summing over all i? That gives me the total number of ones. Okay, that's all. So this n will cancel. So you'll get l times i i divided by summation i l i. <coughs> okay, is that clear? Okay, similarly, what is rho i? Rho j. I'm sorry. Same way, j r j divided by sigma j r j. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, so apparently there is no, there's no apparent reason why you need H perspective degree distribution. It seems like more arithmetic to confuse and complicate matters. Okay. So eventually we'll we'll have some use for it. I'll I'll show it to you when that happens. You'll see at that point this H perspective thing is really really useful. Okay. So it's good to work through this arithmetic when you whenever you get time. Make sure you understand this very very clearly okay so just like before we can define rho of x and l of x okay but for a change we'll do rho of x as summation rho j x power j minus 1 okay similarly lambda of x as summation lambda i x power i minus 1 okay <coughs> just for fun okay x power i or x power i minus 1 is the same i mean i know how to convert from one to the other so it doesn't matter okay okay now I want you to spend some time. This is will this will really test the arithmetic and this understanding of get an expression for rate in terms of rho and lambda. <coughs> the design rate. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. People are still struggling with the derivations. I mean, I can write down the expression, but then there's not much learning there. So you have to struggle with this. You're done? You guys are happy? It's a very simple calculation, but still, it's just, there are so many i's and l's and r's and lambdas and rows, it can get confusing. Lambda cannot come in the numerator. <coughs> See, make sure for the regular case it works.
1 minus oh you will get integrals and all that yeah 1 minus integral rho from 0 to 1 that's the formula okay so the final answer that you should get will look like this because i know the formula okay so the design rate will work out to 1 minus summation rho i by rho j by j i'm sorry let me write it down clearly rho j divided by j divided by summation lambda i divided by i okay so another way of writing it in a very simple way you will see why i put j minus 1 and all that okay so i can write this as integral 0 to 1 rho x dx divided by integral 0 to 1 lambda x dx okay so this is the formula for the design rate okay so make sure you can <coughs> get to this formula okay okay so for this example that we had which is what uh, x x squared by 2 did i get that right x squared by 2 x power 4 by 4 and then x power 7 by 4 and then x power 7 by 2 x power 8 by 2 in the node perspective what is the degree distribution in in the edge perspective okay so you will get x and then you will get a <coughs> x power 3 term then you will get a x power 6 term here you will get x power 6 you will get x power 7 okay so what are the constants that come here you can just plug it in and solve it <coughs> we'll get some numbers and we'll stop with this okay what do we get I'm sorry okay One 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 point seven five in the numerator. Yes. <coughs> okay, so what is okay? So he's saying it should work out to one by three point seven five, one by three point seven five, and then one point seven five by three point seven five. Okay, you might want to check this calculation. Okay, it's a simple calculation going back and forth. What about this next one? Denominator has to be the same. Numerator you will get two. Okay, one point seven five by 3.75 2 by 3.75 okay <coughs> those are the edge perspective degree distribution so it's also possible to say instead of l of x comma r of x you can also say lambda of x comma rho of x okay so another exercise that you should try is given rho of x and lambda of x how do you compute l i and r j how do you go to l of x and r of x okay make sure you have a set of formula for that it's not again once again there will be something involved but it's not too difficult okay see previous formulas were given li and ri rj how do you go to lambda i and rho j so that was i li divided by summation j rj divided by summation over all that okay how do you do the reverse okay it's a simple thing one can write it down and get that okay so make sure you can do that also okay so we'll stop here